right, y'all. So this episode of The Shit We Do For Love was given what it was given. So let's give it what we got. What does the cat do? So this episode starts off with Timmy and Rara sitting down because apparently when Timmy and Tim got put out the party, Rara was in the number of people like shoving them out the door and Rara said to Timmy, I'm going to beat your ass. And so Timmy was like, okay, so since you said that, what's good? That's exactly how the conversation kind of started off. When Timmy and Rara sat down, Timmy was like, okay, so you said you was going to beat my ass? And Rara was like, whoa. When did I say that? And I can kind of understand, like, if you caught up in a moment and you trying to, you know, resolve a situation and somebody getting hyped with you, bitch, and, you know, like, you kind of buck back. And Timmy told him that. You kicked us out the party, and that's when you said you was going to beat my ass, and Ra Ra ultimately apologized. They talked about the situation. We resolved that Timmy is going to stand up for Tim, obviously, and Ra Ra is going to stand up for Travis because that's his friend. D'Angelo and Timmy go to counseling. So they go and sit with this guru and they start to talk about their relationship and off rip, it's like, now wait a minute, we gotta dive deeper. Because when the man asks the first question, how was your relationship? D'Angelo responds, it's fine. And the man is like, okay, <laughs> let's dive deeper. Because if I were to fix you a five course meal and you responded with, it's fine, I would feel offended. And that's when we get to the meat and the potatoes of the goddamn manouche, bitch. Apparently, D'Angelo is afraid of commitment. D'Angelo was like, uh-uh, bitch. Uh-uh, I lost my mama and I just, uh-uh. I told myself I would never be the same and I just don't like to get attached to people. And D'Angelo, I can understand, baby. I lost both my brothers and I don't, even some family. I'm just like, mm-mm. I have a huge problem with reaching out to people. Like, I'm always here if you want to text and reach out or call me and talk. I'm always here, but you'll more than likely never see my name pop up on your screen because I just don't reach out to people. And I think that's, you know, due to losing people. And I just maybe put up a wall so that I don't get too close to people. But, child, with this heart that I have, it's inevitable that I will get close to people and I just have to just release that fear that I lose everybody that's close to me. Because my mom is still here, my dad is still here. You know, I still have family, but losing my brothers was just really traumatizing for me. But this is not about me. So let's get back to the story. So, um, Antonio was like, yeah, bitch, we eight months in, though. I mean, after eight months of us sleeping together all the time, going places, and, you know, again, knocking boots all the time, I would assume that we would, you know, put a title on this and call it what it is. We cannot just continue to be friends, and we body rocking, knocking the boots. And so then they dive into D'Angelo losing his mom five years ago, and then he brings up jealousy, and he was like, I always think he's jealous. And the guru was like, so when does he show you that? And D'Angelo was like, well, he really don't show that he jealous. I just, and that's when we got into the manouche, baby. You make us think, oh, girl. Oh, thank you. This is really just my life story. Sometimes I will make and create, pro well, make and create is the same. Thank you. I will create a problem that doesn't really exist just so that I can have something go wrong in this situation because maybe for a long period of time, I was addicted to trauma. I was addicted to pain. I was addicted to loss. Like, I knew that this was inevitable. And it's, I remember telling somebody when life was good and I went to L.A., I'm just waiting, you know? I know that, you know, life is ebbs and flows, so I know that this is going to end and I'm going to have some traumatic things happen to me. And before the end of the year, I went through one of the darkest depressions I've ever had. And I think I called it on myself because I was just so like, uh, -uh I don't belong in this happiness. I don't belong in this peace. I don't belong in this joy. I don't belong in this financial wealth. Like, it, it just, I don't know. Like, it, it really fucks you up. So when they got to talking about D'Angelo's mom, he really kind of broke down because the guru was really kind of reading him and was like, girl, this is who you are and this is the type of person you are. And he was like, oh my God, oh my God, it's so right, it's so true. And then he got himself together. And then Miss Guru was like, this is what I want you to do. I want you to celebrate your relationship every month. Do something. Have date night. Do something. And Child D'Angelo was like, oh my God! And broke down again. And the Guru was like, girl, like, what's he? Like, why you breaking down? And I think what D'Angelo was trying to articulate was 
Like, again, I'm not used to this. Like, this is new to me, and I never thought... I, I've always wanted this, but I never thought I could really have this. And the fact that I've had it all this time, it, it's, it, you know, it warms my heart and it gets to me. I think that was a happy cry. I really think that was a happy cry. Ty Bun, Oh, baby. If I messed up your name, then, ooh, please, blame my mind and not my heart. And his friend. So they sit down and they talk about the date that Tyvon had with Tammy. Or is it Tyvon? I just want to say Tyvon because that just, it gives me a little bit more flat out. So as they were sitting down talking about the date, I was just tallying up the strikes. And baby, he had reached three strikes before I knew it. The first strike was he already had a drink. Tyvon did not like the fact that when he walked up to the date with Timmy, Timmy was already sipping on something. He was like, was you nervous to meet the kid? Like, was T? Like, why did you have a drink? That's, that was a little rude for you to have your drink. And I had not even arrived yet. That was strike one for Tyvon. Strike two for Tyvon was... Tyvon didn't like the fact that Timmy kept making it seem like, oh, I'm too young. I don't know how old... I think... Timmy is 29 or 30. I don't know, but I know Tyvon is 24. And he was like, well, bitch, I live just as much as you. Do. Baby, age is nothing but a number, but here, here's my thing. I would have shut it down at the root. I have an age limit that I'm not willing to go under just for my own personal preference. 24 was under that number. So I, we wouldn't have seen each other to begin with, but... The fact that you agree to this date, don't don't start tallying up things again. And I'm talking to you, Timmy. Don't start tallying things up against Tyvon as soon as you, oh, you too young. Oh, you this. Uh, don't do that. Give the boy a chance. Give the date a chance. And you may realize that you actually like this guy. If not even for a long-term situation, y'all may just date for a couple months. You know, maybe his ill not measly is oh so pleasly. And, you know, you, you just never know what could come from a situation. And then strike three. Now, strike three for Tyvon would be all three strikes for me. Because I like what I like. Hallelujah. Tyvon said he felt like Timmy was giving fake straight. Now, I don't... <laughs> I don't want to say he was giving fake trade. I really think he was being himself. But when he was talking to Travis late on in the episode, it was just a lot of this going on. And I was just like, oh, okay. So once we get to the root and the minutia who you are, there is some sugar in that tank. And that's fine. That is completely okay. Do not be ashamed to sashay away if you need to. It's just not for me. And apparently it's not for Tyvon. And he was like, girl, uh-uh. But he is willing to go to the brunch that you invited him to. So, yeah, he was saying that Timmy invited him to a brunch where he can meet the rest of the kids, the rest of his friends, and he was willing to go so he could really just meet everybody and kind of get acclimated with the group. Hallelujah. Speaking of Timmy, this is a perfect segue. We then see him sit down with Travis. And um, Travis was already dismissive by the time Timmy sat down because Timmy was late. Now, mm, here's my thing. If you was in that much of a time crunch, Travis, I wouldn't have agreed to this time slot. Baby, let's let's meet after my second gig or let's meet on another day because I have to. Like, that would have been my time to eat in between gigs. So, I, I wouldn't have even wanted to talk to anybody. You know, especially with you saying that you was not in the right headspace. But, yeah, he was really dismissive. And I'm the type of person, okay, I get that I'm late, whatever. But what I did not like about what Travis was doing was... As Timmy was talking, he was like, okay, get to it. Okay, come on. Okay, I ain't got the time, baby. Come on, get to it. Like, cutting him off. Like, I, how can I get to it if I can't speak? I, I need to be able to speak, and I get that I may be dragging it out and giving you this long prelude. Shout out to Scotty and Jamal. But, girl, let me say what I got to say. Let, Because, obviously, I'm getting somewhere. You wanted me to have the floor. You wanted me to start this conversation off. Boom. Let, let me do what I got to do. But with all that being said, I'm team Travis on this one. Travis was like, well, why did you bring him in the first place? Like, fuck what he got going on with Malcolm. You know I don't like him, and this is my birthday party. And crazy enough, I was able to have my birthday party on my birthday. A lot of people don't get to do that because people's birthday falls in the middle of the week. So this was my actual birthday. So of all days, to bring the fuck shit to me, 
You brought it on my birthday, my personal new year, and I like that term. And Timmy, for your response to be, for your only response to continuously be, well, you caused the scene. He was just defending himself. Bitch, it's my part. Have you not heard the song? Like, I just didn't understand how you felt like y'all were right in causing friction at this boy's party. And then for you to say, well, I'm not here for all that. Yes, oh. then baby, you didn't waste 10 minutes of my time arguing with me about something you never came to talk about. As soon as Travis would have said, well, why did you bring him of all this? Da, 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 I would have said, okay, I get that. But I'm really here to just talk about me and you. And I know that you on a time crunch because that's what you said when I first sat down. So let me just talk about what, boom. You chose to waste this man's time. I wanted to say, well, I didn't even come here for that. And then the heat get turned up, bitch. Travis was like, well, girl, at the end of the day, you kind of left a sour taste in my mouth. <laughs> like, girl, I'm not feeling you right now. So, mm, as far as us being friends, girl, I don't know. I don't need that. I really have a good life right now. I have a man, the love of my life, and I have other things going on. And in between him saying I have the man, the love of my life, and other great things going on, Timmy interjected, do you? Do you? And Travis was like, do I would? Try me not. And I think the words rent a dude were mentioned. Now this, oh, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, explains why Travis was down my throat when I made my assumption and my observation in episode one. Because I guess I was on par with what the word around town was. To be truthfully honest, I have no connections in Atlanta, Georgia. I don't know nobody out there, and I don't know... I was not privy to that information. I was not privy to any information that y'all were feeling that way. This was just what I saw. So now it explains why he was so defensive when it came to Leon and how I felt about that whole situation because the whole town is laughing at you. They really have no reason to because you have a legitimate relationship, so you say. So, Lord. And then Travis had had it, honey. He said, girl, so I'm about to go off and take this mic off, but before I do, let me spin around in a circle and tell you that, bitch, you on my motherfucking show. He turned into Nene Hernandez, bitch. He said, bitch, you is on my show. This is my shit. You need to be grateful that you even got this time slot with the queen because, bitch, I'm the L99. I'm the queen. L-A-T-I-F-A-H in command. Like, I am the one. And you got an opportunity to sit down with me, so thank your lucky stars, bitch. Let me take my mask, take this damn mic off, and sit it in this chat and leave. Because, and leave. Because I cannot do this with you anymore. And then the episode ends with the date night that the guru suggested for D'Angelo and Antonio. It was real cute. Hallelujah. They, had, they played cute little games. They was talking about the session and should they go back. And um, D'Angelo needs to work on cutting people off. And stop getting mad at your man because he want to mix Adidas and Jordans together. Hallelujah. Because, ooh, girl, I despise people who wear Jordan clothes. Ugh. I don't know. Jordan has just never been a fashion icon. So, I mean, I, I can see the Adidas. You know, I can see the Ivy Park with some Jordans. I can see that. But, yeah, that was the episode, and that was what it was given. Um, I really love Antonio for D'Angelo. I, I think me and D'Angelo would click because we are the same person. When he said, you always the one being late, bitch, because you went out the house and you forget something, you always got to run back, that is me to the T, bitch. But, yeah, this episode was given what it was given, so I gave it what I had. Make sure you were liking, commenting, subscribing, and that the notifications are on, girl. Same place, same time.